What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and in this video I'm going to be going over my Blade Show Atlanta 2023 haul. Still here at Blade Show actually in the hotel. Figured have everything in one place when I get home it's all going to be scattered and so thought I'd do a video here. I do apologize for my voice. It's definitely a little bit shot. I've been talking a ton, drinking a lot of water, but it doesn't seem to be helping and I'll probably pause throughout the video to drink some more and try and keep that at bay, but I do apologize for that. Now really really amazing show i say this every time i go to a nice show my favorite people part was the people got to met, meet some really amazing people people i've met before at other shows and just reconnecting with them people i planned on meeting people i didn't plan on meeting and so that's honestly the best part i got a really great haul but you can't replace that the conversations you know most people don't have a lot of people in their lives that are super into knives and so everyone here is and you can connect with anyone everyone in line wants to chat wants to see what you picked up and it's just a ton of fun definitely recommend it if you ever get the chance now that being said there was a lot of people i wanted to meet or even talk to about meeting and didn't have a chance to meet up with and that's true of the booths as well there's booths that i didn't make it to and it's just overwhelming there's not a lot of time it goes a lot faster than you expect with 900 booths and 30,000 people it goes really really fast and so Unfortunately, I didn't meet everyone that I was hoping to meet, but hopefully there will be future shows and I'll have a chance to meet them there. Now, I came into Blade Show with a decent budget. I have been saving basically since I got the tickets. I wanted to, you know, if I'm flying all the way out to Atlanta, make sure that I make the most of the trip and able to grab the things I want without worrying so much about the budget. So I came in, I think, around the $3,500 budget and spent most of that honestly but picked up some really really great gear so i had the early access pass went straight to river's edge cutlery and i should mention that i wasn't really going after anything that really required an early access pass i think everything i got would have been there at the regular time but figured might as well grab it it wasn't much more or might have even been the same price you just had to get it early but went over to river's edge cutlery and this is the item i wanted to grab it's the Spyderco smock, but they call it the smockadile. And so really, really cool. I've wanted to smock for a while, but this version is just over the top. You can see it has that green coating all over and the crocodile etched right next to the spidey hole. But yeah, they hit everything. The liners, the backspacer, all the hardware, everything's Cerakoted. So looks really good. A lot of fun to fidget with. The spidey hole works really, really, as I say that I feel it, the spider, curl, the spider hole works really well for spidey flicking and just a fun knife to play with. I've been really impressed. It's definitely one of my favorite items that I grabbed at the show. Now next up was another item from River's Edge Cutlery and I was planning on grabbing one of these but not necessarily from them but once I saw it I definitely wanted this version. So this is the CWF Micro Click flashlight and has the River's Edge Cutlery exclusives. They do this colorway on a lot of them. Looks really, really good, matches the knife a little bit. And so I decided to grab this one. I still met up with the guy who makes these and have heard really great things. I talked to a lot of owners of these and I, the customer service is supposedly amazing. And they're fun because they're programmable and moddable. I'm not into flashlight modding, but they are moddable. It has a 10440 battery in there, 650 lumens, super, super bright. Try not to shine it directly into the camera, but super bright. and have been really impressed with it honestly i never i've wanted one but i never expected to actually buy one just because they're so expensive if you're offended by expensive flashlights definitely don't look these up and see how much they actually cost but this one's an aluminum one so a little bit cheaper and they come in titanium copper brass and the guy was just super friendly and really cool dude but grab this one from river's edge cutlery obviously now after that i didn't really have a plan to go there early on, but I did want to check them out. I went to Microtech, and so I had passed them on the way over here, so I just went back and super crowded at the time. I wanted to check out one of their RAM locks, and so I got the MSI, and the one I got isn't as broken in, obviously, as the one on the show floor, so the action's still a little bit slow and just kind of mushy for me. I'm hoping it'll break in, so kind of waiting to judge it until it's had a chance to break in. But so far, it's kind of been the least impressive of the ones that I've gotten at the show, but still really excited to spend some more time with it. It's a larger knife than I usually pick up and really like that ram lock, actually. So it's obviously their version of the axis lock, and you can see it has that X pattern that you see on the switches for their OTS, and that kind of pyramids out. So really easy to get a grip on there and good for using it to deploy as well but definitely excited to spend a little more time with it but so far just kind of in the middle right now with it but after that i went to same booth microtech they had a line for their show special and i grabbed the show special which has this g10 black frag pattern and it's a bayonet blade 
with Magna Cut. And so these were only $180, which is really, really great for this. And I've never owned a out the front Microtech and so wanted to grab one. So glad I was able to get one at such a great price. Now they were doing a limit of five per person. That feels a little bit high. I feel like they should have done two per person because they were in pretty high demand and some people that didn't get there till Saturday, for example, weren't able to grab one. And so it would have been cool to do a lower limit, but I get it. Um, really, really cool knife though. And like I said, they were basically printing money with these. Uh, there were people that were buying five of them, obviously to resell, but so for five of them, it was 900 bucks and they didn't have a cash box or bags like you normally see. They had a Rubbermaid tub with a hole drilled in the top. They were just dumping the money in. And so definitely printing money with that one, but really cool, excited to own that now. Now I went next door right after that and next door them was Medford, which I'm not super into Medford, so I didn't get anything there. But they also have their American Service Knife, which is a different brand, but still owned by them. And I got the Jefferson. This is the Ultex version. And you can see I got the stone wash tools, which is a little bit different. And so I've been wanting one of these for a while. I think ASK, the acronym is kind of a play on SAC, because same letters, so Swiss Army Knife, American Service Knife. But the old text looks like Ultum, it's not. It's uh, supposedly a little bit more durable, a little bit easier to work with. You can see it's really clear, so you can see the liners through there, which I think is pretty cool. And so I got the blade, the bottle opener with screwdriver and the scraping tool. and. They don't actually sell the replacement parts in Stonewash. So I'm, the guy gave me his email, told him to reach out if I want to replace any of these tools and he can work with me to get them stonewashed. They usually have this satin finish. And so they were handing these out on keychains in the line to check out. So I got a couple of those as well. But the thing about these is they're modifiable. They take a T25 screw and you can replace them with whatever you want. If you want a bladeless model that you can carry in the airport, you can do that and you can add, I believe you can add a layer. I only have the two layers so you can see, but you can add a third on there and put more tools if you want. And they're really customizable. So that's a cool thing. Now they also threw in a free pair of scales. I think the scales are usually like 20 bucks, so not too crazy, but they gave me the clear ones, which just cause they had a kind of a similar vibe. And the guy, the rep that I was working with really liked the clear. So that was super cool. After that, I went down to Arcane Designs. I saw them kind of off in the distance. So when I first started my YouTube channel, the first knife show I went to, he was basically the first guy I met in EDC, Israel. And so I have all of the recent knives, but wanted to just visit him. Didn't plan on picking anything up, but did end up grabbing the Necro Nook. And so they have these in all kinds of colors. They're super cool. It's just a Singer Fingle Nook, which I'm never going to use them as a Nook. They're basically pocket art to me. I have a bunch of them, but thought this one was really cool. I got mine with the nebula bead and really cool looking. It's got a clear resin around like a colorful looking cloud. Depending on what color you get, it will color match to that. But really cool from him and was great connecting with him. Met up with him in the pit later and really great guy if you ever have a chance to meet him. Now from there I went over not intentionally to Blade HQ, uh, just kind of rounding the corner, saw that they had their donut lineup and they had all, all of their previous models. They had like the Kalashnikovs, they had the Microtech, the Protech, a few other ones I'm probably missing, but I ended up grabbing the Godson. And so I wanted the Godson anyway. And so I figured might as well get the Dessert Warrior. Looks really cool, fun, fun one. And the action on it's just as good as any Microtech, has that red button on there, looks really cool. And so wasn't actually planning on grabbing this one. I was actually thinking about going to the Protech booth for the ACTF, the Terzola knife. And so I did still go over there just to visit them. They're local to me and see them at all of the local shows. So I wanted to go visit, met up with Bob Terzola who was doing a engraving and signature on the blades. And so that was really cool. But with this one, you actually, if any purchase at the Blade HQ booth, you got a free pair of dice. And so got these donut dice, which are super cool. You could buy them separately for $5, but might as well get them for free. Ended up with a second pair on the second day because I went back and bought something else. I'm kind of going in order, so that'll be a little bit later in the video, but I'm trying to go as much as possible in order. There's a few that might be swapped, but pretty close. Now after that, I went over to Jack Wolf Knives and he had reached out before to come check out his booth and I was planning on it anyway. Honestly, I'm wanting to get more into traditionals, but like some of the more kind of high end stuff. So I wanted to see what he had to offer and didn't end up buying a traditional. But what I did get was the Gunslinger Jack. And so super cool knife. You can probably hear the acoustics on that it has a really, really nice ting to it. And this is a locking version of a previous model. And so you can see it has kind of that rifle stock handle, but it is an inset liner lock and 
really, really great. It has a front flipper tab. I don't really use it that much, even though it works well. I'm not super into front flippers, but it works really well and that's fine. But what I like is that he left the nail nick as if it were traditional, but that will act basically as a floor. You can get your nail in there really easily and just fling it open. Obviously messed that up, but just fling it open and so really really great knife was really impressed with it the purple on it's amazing you can see it's in that backspacer pocket clip now if you're not into pocket clips there is an insert to delete the pocket clip and you can just use it with a slip like you would his traditionals but really really cool knife and even better guy i spent a lot of time with him this weekend actually and just a really cool down-to-earth guy super passionate about knives and what he's doing and seems to have a solid plan to take over the world you know just a cool dude i'm really really excited that i had the chance to meet him one of my favorite people that I met here obviously don't want to play favorites but hands down one of the coolest people I met now after that one of the booths that I did want to get to early and didn't just map it out very well but wasn't a problem because they were available was T. Kell and so you can see the shirt this came with the knife there's some print on the back but came with the knife but I really wanted to pick up the off sock and so super cool fixed blade you can see it's like tactical not usually my thing but just love the way this looked for whatever reason and it feels even better in hand and they were also a really great group of guys talked to them quite a bit and just really impressed with it I didn't know about T-Kill knives until about a week before the show I was watching a YouTube video that he had done himself and so that was a uh, really really cool and definitely if you're into fixed blades especially like tactical or combat blades he does a lot of that kind of stuff and so that's not usually my thing but just love the way that one looked now from there I went over to Tactile Turn and I had been thinking about buying the reset probably two weeks before the show I was going to buy it and then I'm like ah oh, they'll probably have it at the show but what they actually ended up having was the reverse and so the reset is usually gray on the body and then the tip and click and pocket clip and all of that are usually orange but I got the orange on the body and the gray so I'm glad I waited I probably would not just end up with both but I'm glad I waited because I got this version so super cool it's just a regular click pin and then on the side it has this button to release it writes really well wrote all my notes for this video with it and just a cool pen so with those though you got the box which I'm got to show just because it's so cool it looks like an old castle from a video game and then a coin as well so a little arcade token no cash value has the 8 bit on one side and on the other side it has their logo but really fun and excited about having that reverse I really unexpected I guess they might have posted I just didn't notice I don't know I, I feel like there was a lot of stuff that I didn't see before the show I probably should have done a little bit more research but then went over to Notorious EDC obviously a big fan of the Kingpin the beer bombs all good pouch and so just really wanted to meet Tom didn't really have high hopes that there would be a lot left there was a couple left but not much um by the time i got there it was mostly like lotto and open bid auction type stuff but did grab a couple of his coasters these are really cool you can see notorious every day and then it has some lyrics on it's all good and baby baby on the bottom and so just fun stuff another really good guy I spent some time with him in the pit last night and uh just a cool dude overall. Definitely check him out if you can. The kingpins are why the reason why I want to get back into traditionals. And so definitely check that out if you haven't. I have a video on the kingpin actually. Now after that I went right next door, met up with Eddie at OEG and grabbed the Marion. And so this is a snow camo variant. Really, really cool, just kind of mini fixed blade. You can see that one-eyed ghost sort of in the background. And the sheath itself he also added a nice touch instead of just using black he has gray on one side and black on the other to kind of match up with the camo Cerakote now it also has the ulti clip on there works really really well we had it clipped to my bag all weekend and so definitely got a lot of compliments on this one it's just kind of out and right on my chest so definitely a lot of people seeing it but really really excited about this definitely another cool company worth checking out now while i was there i also picked up one of his flags i've been doing the wall over where i keep my cigars and watches i've been kind of re decorating i guess with pictures and wall art and stuff like that so i ended up grabbing one of these felt flags from him with that one-eyed ghost on it and really really cool and if you can check them out just celebrate everything there's the website on the back definitely check them out they do custom stuff so you can get not oeg the company that made this so you can get your own flag with your own logo if you have one or whatever you want on there but really really cool guy as well 
and really happy that I had a chance to meet him in person. Now from there I went over to JRW and so that was the complete opposite side. So both Notorious EDC and OEG EDC were both in the ballroom where the JRW and I think everything I've shown so far, yeah, everything I've shown so far was in the main room, but grabbed a accomplice and I've been wanting one of these for a while, another single finger knuck and so really really cool one from him and I wanted the brass one specifically so he had a few of these still on the table was able to grab that got to get a matching bead for it he had a couple of brass ones but they were more like unfinished so super shiny and so wanted to get something that matched a little bit better but you can see the tough guy there on the end just a cool one and I have some art from ink pot that has an accomplice with arms and legs on it just graffiti style and so wanted to make sure to actually pick up an accomplice I was planning on picking up that one at the time but missed the drop unfortunately now, right next to them was Zero Feud. They had a few of their pouches, but I have them all already, so didn't pick those up. But they did have their click and double click and all of those, and so wanted to grab one of these. At first, I didn't really get the hype. This is just a fidget. It has some keyboard caps on there, and you can just fidget with it. And so at first, I didn't really get the hype on these, but I met up a few months ago with uh, Alan at What's In My Pocket. He's half of Inky EDC, and he had one that he let me play with, and it's just super satisfying. I, as soon as you handle it, you get it. And so super cool. I think these were like 60 bucks. You can choose the caps. I went with black because I thought they looked the best with this brass, but it's a little bit heavier than some of the other versions. They have other materials, but this one's a little bit heavier. It feels a little more substantial, and I just love the way brass looks. So that was an exciting one. From there, I went over to High Tech. That's the same place that CWF was at, and also Nice Guy Machine Company. And so I got the Mr. Nice Bar. Sorry, this is twisting up. Mr. Nice Bar Pry Bar. Just a really cool pry that, I, again, I've been wanting to check out for a while. And so I was able to grab that. He had a few things there. It was a small part of the table, but had a few cool things that are usually pretty hard to get. So glad I was able to get, grab that. I didn't even know who's going to be there, actually. So really, really happy about that. Now after that I went over to Devo, checked out all of their models, ended up with the Pony Stout. And this is a really cool knife, probably one of the more budget friendly, actually I think everything from here on out is pretty budget friendly. One of the more budget friendly knives I picked up though, I think this is around 60 bucks, has that blue micarta, looks really really good and really good action on this. was able to spidey flick it super well. Every time I say that I feel it, but <laughs> overall really really good action on it. So that's super cool, got out to meet up with Lefty, so that was cool as well, had never met him before. But the next day, so that was all actually day one. So the next day I went straight to Civivi, which is a little bit weird because not super into Civivi or Wii, Senka. I like a lot of their knives, but not something that is usually like, would be my first stop. But they had this coin they were giving away if you bought a knife. And so I ended up getting the Civivi Elementum with the flipper and the antique brass finished Tanto blade. So a little bit different than the regular Elementum, which I liked and it matches my mini Elementum. So I wanted to do that. But with it came a free coin, which is what I was most excited about from there, honestly. And it has the buy the knife on one side, but if you happen to land on the other side, you get flip again. Is that focused? Yeah, I think so. And you get the flip again. And so really, really cool coin. Just super excited about that. Didn't have to spend much. I think the prices were a little bit cheaper than what you'd pay online. And so didn't have to pay too much for that and got a really cool coin with it. Now, later on, I ended up circling back to that Blade HQ booth and picking up the Super Tinker from Victorinox in the Dessert Warrior as well. Now, I already have the classic Dessert Warrior version, but I saw Conan's EDC had one of these and wanted to grab one. And so, got one of these on the second day, which means I got a second pair of dice, which is cool. Still not enough for Yahtzee, but did end up with four dice total. And so, that's cool. And after that, I came across Fox. I had this new line of... Swiss Army knife style, I guess, blades. And so, this is really weird actually, sorry. But they they had a bunch of them that's like single blade, two tool, three tool, four tool, five tool. And so picked this one up. They range from like 25 to 60 bucks, I think. Got it in orange. And this one has four tools total on it. Got the blade. Over here you have the screwdriver bottle opener. Over here, you get a package opener and screwdriver, another bottle opener or can opener on this side, I'm sorry. 
And then this tool, it really doesn't work very well and the rep on, didn't even know it was there. I asked what this tool was in the middle and it's like, oh, that's just a spacer. But it's not a spacer, it's a saw. And it's a little bit hard to get to, you have to get a fingernail under there. And once you do, it comes out, nice little tiny saw. But the problem is it doesn't close very well, so I bet if I close this, it's gonna get stuck. So yeah, see that? So it gets stuck right there, so you kinda have to move it out of the way. So hopefully they work that kink out. These are already for sale. I forget what this is called, the Fox Vulpus. And so these are already for sale, but definitely need to work out the kink with that saw because you can't get to it. They should make it stick out a little bit from the end, and then when you close it every single time it fails. And so, something to keep in mind, but we'll definitely do a full review on that later, but that huge downside on that one. Now, after that, I ended up at Cobra Tech, and they made this little out the front bottle opener. Just thought this was pretty fun. It was also relatively cheap, and so grabbed this one. The dude there was super cool, too. And I had actually never handled the Cobra Tech, because I figured they were just like kind of a cheaper version of Micro Tech. I'd rather have a Micro Tech. But they were pretty good. They felt pretty similar, honestly, action-wise, and this bottle opener was super fun. And so got that. I don't know if I showed actually when I did the Gunslinger Jack, but obviously you still get that tin, as well as the pog. I'm pretty sure I showed the pog. And oh, that's upside down. The pog, as well as that microfiber, I got the creamsicle orange. So just in case I didn't show that, throw that in there again. Now that's most of the main items, honestly. I got this from Vero. I had been talking to him, the designer behind it, and he, I have the fulcrum, I didn't have it on me, but he had this stand that he was displaying the fulcrum on, it holds five of those micro bits. And I was asking him about it, and he's like, hey, do you have one? I was like, yeah. He's like, here, here you go. And me and my buddy, uh, EDCologist, who was also out here, um, he gave both of us one different colors and so super excited about just throwing this on my desk and throwing it in there. He also gave some replacement bands so that it comes with the black bands but a bunch of different colors so if you want to swap them out to hold those bits in place with different colors, gave a bunch of those as well. So that was super cool of him. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the swag like I mentioned but did get this hat from Benchmade. And so super cool hat, it's really, really good looking. It's a snapback, obviously. And these SMKW ones are walking around, handing them out to everyone in line. And so that's a cool one as well. It's got that kind of trucker hat style. And like that, really love the Benchmade one. I think it looks really great. You had to ask about it. A lot of people were asking about it and like, oh, do you buy that at Benchmade? Because they're not, Benchmade wasn't selling anything. They were just showing all of their models. And I was like, no, they're giving away for free. You just have to ask. So they had a ton of them behind the counter, really cool. They were also giving away this giant Hank, which is nice. I'll try and back up a little bit. See if I got it the right direction. There we go. It's a giant Hank, so that's super cool. Nice kind of normal bandana size rather than the smaller Hanks that you usually see on the channel. And so I was excited about that. Gonna show some of the microfibers also, just because they were a little bit fun. I was talking to the guy over at Phil Holter, again while EDCologist was buying a pen, and he had these microfibers I asked about, he gave me one, and it says my pen is huge. But you can see just a really fun little microfiber cloth. He also had shirts like this, but he gave me this one. I think he was selling them, but that was really nice of him. Same thing at River's Edge Cutlery. They were selling these for $2.50 a piece, but you just throw them in with my order. And so got two of theirs. And these are kind of a nice small size, really nice microfiber on the back. Got one from Giant Mouse as well. Get that turned around. It's just kind of a cute one. And then, of course, the Devo Knives one that they threw in. These are a little bit larger if you've never gotten one. Nice little, almost like shop rags size. And so that's pretty cool. Also, EK Knives was handing out these bags. And so, really glad to get these on day two because on day one, someone had given me a plastic bag after I filled up my backpack and it had a hole in it. So I lost a few items. But luckily, there were mostly small items. One of them was a bead from OEG. And he was really cool about it. He replaced it the next day. And that was one that he was only bringing to the show. So really glad I got that back because I was super bummed about missing it. But again, Eddie is a super cool dude. So really happy that I was able to get that back. But that's everything in kind of the main main stuff. I'll show, like I said, the patches. I probably got like 15, 20 patches as well as all the stickers. I'm going to try and spread them out on the table. I'll throw like beads and pins. Actually, Spyderco had this really cool pin. I'll just show that one right now. But I'll spread them out on the table and just kind of sweep over them at the end of this. I also might try and throw in some photos that I took of just people that I met up with 
don't actually know how to do that. I don't ever edit my videos, so I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I'm sure it's not that difficult. So hopefully that'll be in there as well. But thanks so much for watching. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely stay tuned for the patches and stickers if that's something you're interested in and have a great one. Take care.